Hey everyone, welcome to Lunchtime Golf. My name's Stephen, and today we're going to talk about connecting the Garmin R10 to GS Pro alongside adding the putting component, detecting the ball, and getting it all up and running so you can play some simulated golf with putting. Anyway, the first thing we need to do is head to uh, GitHub to download the latest connectors. Here I've got uh, Matthew H's connector here. What we're going to do is we're going to download the latest version of that and with the Bluetooth enabled by default. So that will start downloading. What also we need to do now is save that um, into our uh, drive where we're going to keep this file. So as that's downloading here, what I will do is I will open that and save it in the appropriate uh, directory. So we'll just save that here. Fortunately, this is quite a, a small program that we can just uh, move to the various folders where appropriate. Um, and in this case here, I'm going to store it on my D drive in uh, a programs folder, but I'm just going to call it GS Pro Demo, and we'll go from there. Okay, so once we've got those two programs in here, we need to get the putting camera program and we need to get a folder called uh, ball underscore tracking and we need to add it to that folder so that they can see each other. So we will download that and we will put that in the folder once it's done. Okay, so before while that's downloading, uh, my apologies for Australian uh, internet, it can be quite slow. What we're going to do is we're just going to modify the uh, settings file in the connector, main connector program, so that we can get putting working here. So in this case here, I'm just going to open with uh, Notepad. You can open it with anything. Um, and as you can see here, it's just a text. So I normally don't really worry about any of this stuff up the top, but what I am going to go is down to this putting section. I'm going to enable uh, it as true, which means that GS Pro and the connector will work together. Uh, I'm going to have it so that the ball tracker is launched and I'm going to have it so that the tracker only launches when we are in putting mode in GS Pro and keep putting camera on top of GS Pro is quite important for just being able to see what you're doing. Now I have two webcams uh, going at the moment, one for my putter and one for this uh, demonstration. I think my putter webcam is currently configured to be position zero but if not we'll, we'll find out soon enough. Uh, at the moment we're going to go through with two balls, a white one and a yellow one. Um, so I'll leave white uh, as it is there. And at the moment, uh, we've got these other options here, which we'll just leave for default. So the only thing I changed here was enable this to be true. And my webcam index, I'm not quite sure, but we'll find out in a second. Okay, so it looks like this has finished um, downloading. So the ball tracking. So what I'm going to do is extract that here as well. Um, and then I will copy the contents of that folder into the uh, appropriate spot in the connector. So this is really important and it's probably, I've seen a few posts here and there where this step is sort of uh, misinterpreted what to do. But basically, uh, once we've extracted that zip file, we take the ball tracking folder and we drop it into the spot that we created uh, previously on the D drive. So in this case here, GS Pro Demo, and we just drop that in here. Okay, and so this is where um, most of the calibration work will happen now that you need to set up putting. You don't actually have to do it in GS Pro just yet uh, because there's now options for it to save um, where, what colors you selected and what you did. And so you can do it all from here. So one of the things you'll notice here is there's this ball tracking program. Um, and we're going to launch that and we're going to hopefully see uh, this message, which we don't really want to see, but this is a, a Windows security message. So what we're going to do is click more info and click run anyway. Um, this is just for your own sort of uh, protection. Okay, and so what's happening now is it's found my webcam in position zero. Uh, so that's good. Um, and so what we're going to do now is set it up now. So I have my webcam on a uh, tripod. Um, it should hope for you to see that and what I'm going to do is set that up over here now I have poor, poor, quite poor lighting at the moment and that's primarily because 
um, I'm inside going to be working on this project um, and we'll hopefully come up with a, a, a good demonstration and solution of, of what we need to do. So I'm just going to set this up here um, on my carpet and then I'm also going to show you what I have putting on. So obviously putting on this carpet that you can see on my floor here is going to be very difficult as it's multi-colors. So what I've done is I've actually built a, a putting green which I've mentioned before but it's basically just a piece of turf glued onto uh, a block of wood that I can take inside and outside. Works quite well. Anyway, so we're going to pop that down here. Now this bowl is going to be directly under a light, which is good. So I will be able to do some, some putting here. So in order for me not to cast incorrect shadows onto the ball, I'm going to place this here and get the best possible lighting of the available light that I have. Um, working. So we'll go this way. And get it a bit closer like this. And we can start to see the mat on the putting screen there as well. Okay, so now things are starting to look a bit better. I'm starting to line up that line. That's looking okay. All right, so that's I think pretty good for where we're going to start this demo. So the default color of the ball is white. And so if I put this into the detection zone, which is this yellow box, we probably might get a reading on it. And in this case, we haven't. And that might be due to us having quite a bit of um, interference with other colors. As you can see, there's white on the screen here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this detection zone to be a bit smaller so that we can do some putting on it. So what we're going to do to do that is we pull up the A and we're going to modify these sliders here. So X start and X end. X start is this vertical yellow line, X end is this other vertical one. So we're going to make that detection zone smaller, but we're also going to make the detection zone uh, go all the way up to the top and all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to move our Y. We want our Y to start up here and we want our Y to go here. And there we go. So straight away, the radius has found um, it. And so what we can do now is we can still see a little bit of flashing here. So what I want to do is I want to jump in and have a look at what's called the mask, which is uh, the way this program works is it looks for the white ball and it isolates all of the color white in this picture here, um, in this mask, sorry, and the mask extends from this box all the way to the end. And so if you want to bring up the mask to have a look, we can hit D. That will bring up another couple of screens. Um, and this mask here, as you can see, goes across the yellow box. So what it's doing is it's saying, okay, here's my putting window. I'm going to detect the ball in this position at any time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for white objects. And as you can see here, I've got a bit of an issue with it not being solid white and flickering in and out of the white. And that's probably just due to my poor lighting. So what you can do is you can muck around with some sliders. And as you can see, that's doing something with the ball. Or you can um, change the white balance on your image, uh, which is going to in impact the way that your um, ball is detected. But it, see here that I've done it this way. So I've mucked around with the white balance to try and match my lights. So now I get a solid blue ball, uh, which, is, which is perfect. That's kind of what we want for putting. Um, and so if we pull that up here, we've got a radius of 15. I think that's uh, pretty good. And so what we can do now is just do a little test shot. And it should start to track that as we move through. Um, and I'll just do a little one. And you see how that captured um, a couple of dots and it's spat out some um, information there about how far we've putted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a putt stop at the end of my putter, um, which the old trusty backpack will do the trick here. Uh, so we can start to really whack it in there. Uh, so if I put that down somewhere here. So obviously you want to have a high um, frames per second. I think this one that I've got is capturing about 30 frames, which allows us to really, really punch a, a ball down the, down the green there. And it's got a very good chance of detecting it there. 
So that one there detected it at approximately, um, what did we get on that one? If you have a look at the info it, it captured here, uh, we got that one at about three miles per hour, four miles per hour, which seems a bit slow. So now what we can do to see if that has remembered everything, uh, if we hit close, um, it should go. So if we look at the um, config file, there's no additional information here stored, which means that I didn't have to modify any of the HSV values uh, to make it so that it captures the ball. And so what we can do now is when we open up our ball tracking program, it should remember the settings um, before. So let's pop the white ball back into the detection zone. And it has picked it up straight away which will allow us to do a bit of a bigger putt. And so that's managed to get that. So that one there went through at about seven miles per hour. So one of the things that you've got to work on once you get it working is just trying to dial in that speed. Um, in this case here, this putting turf is uh, kind of like a, it's definitely not like a green, but it's like a fairway, a really good quality fairway. So you can actually putt reasonably um, fast on it. But anyway, so that, that gets that solved there. So we're pretty happy with the calibration of the um, putting tool in uh, GS Pro. So once you've got a setup like this, and then once you want to change um, ball color, it's not too bad of a deal. So how we would do that in this case here, uh, this is a yellow ball, which is... Um, you know, it's it's not a bright, bright yellow, but it's not a, it's certainly not white. But in the light that I'm working with, I've got a very warm light, so it kind of looks a little bit funny on the camera. So what I'll do is I'll pop that ball down, and I will open up the ball tracking, which is looking for a white ball, and it should not find anything. So as, as you can see here, before it found it straight away, um, in this case here, it hasn't found it at all. So if I put the white ball down next to it, it finds it straight away. So we, we can see that it's calibrated for the white ball, uh, which is exactly what we want. Um, but we want to do it for a yellow ball now. So how this program works is it's looking for colors and it's detecting colors in your detection zone. And then it's going to follow that color through the rest of your putting strip. So in order to understand how we find the correct color, um, it uses HS, uh, sorry, HSV, which is hue, saturation, brightness, or value. And so we have to go to our color pi, um, or color spectrum, to find where we want to look. Now, Alex in the putting has sort of um, put in some ranges for a particular colors, but you know you can do this on any color, it doesn't matter. It's just about finding that correct color. So the way that the HSV works, and we're looking at this box here, is it starts at zero, and it goes all the way 360 degrees around the color. So in this case here, red is at position zero. Blue over here is at position uh, 222. Green is at position 129. And yellow, where we want to look for our ball, is around this position of uh, 55. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to uh, try and put our uh, pro putting program detecting values around that 50, 55, 60 mark. So the way that, and when I just quickly show you this one here. So if we pull up uh, D, which is the debug ad extra advanced options, we can see that the HSV here, hue, sat, and value, they have a min and a max. And one way you can think about what the min and the max is doing is it's saying, okay, what it's saying, if the minimum here is 47 and the maximum here is uh, 62, then anything from the center to those mins and maxes is going to capture that kind of yellow. So what we can do is we can input those here. So we want our minimum to sort of look for yellows in this range of uh, 43. And so the way that um, the OpenCV libraries, which is the computer vision program driving this putter webcam, is it looks at that 
so we're going to halve it. So it goes doesn't go from 0 to 360, it goes from 0 to 180. So to halve that, we're going to look we're going to start at values of 20. So we're going to move this up and we will put this at 20. And then we want to go a little bit further along. So our yellows are sort of going to end around here, which is uh, 60. So if we halve that, we've got a 30. So we've got a wedge of about 30. And so if we bring up our mask, you can start to see now that we've honed in on that particular color zone, we're getting a nice ball. And if we go back to our detection, it's got it. Now, one of the things that you can see here is you've got this big bright blot on there. And that's because that big bright blot is sort of like a, a slightly different or washed out color. So sometimes that is an issue, sometimes that's not. But let's, uh, let's do a couple of putts just to see what's going on with this yellow ball. Okay, so I'm gonna putt that one and we'll hopefully see if we can get some detections. Okay, so we got some good reads there. Uh, no dramas there. So let's put this ball back into the detection zone and we'll see if we can actually get it uh, working again and so that's finding it so okay so we, we can see that it's finding it but that circles not quite covering the ball now what we can do is actually fiddle with the other two values here of the yellow so this particular so if you want to look at the value of um, saturation it's this one here and so as you go towards the center of this pie you're changing that color a little bit and the way that um, you can sort of see where your colors actually are is if you use a color picker. So I'm going to use one from Microsoft. It's um, under their Power Toys um, options. But I'm going to actually go to this here and have a look. So we see that our HSV is around you know, 40, 45, which is smack bang in the range we put. But you can see that our, in the center of the ball, we've got 100% for value which is, I'm oh, sorry, for lightness or brightness. And we've got that 50, 60, but on the edge, we've got that 50, 60, and the edges isn't as high. So we can probably do some potential tweaking with this one here to potentially bring up that one or just take out some of those brighter ones. Doesn't seem to be responding as well as you would hope. Um, so we might just leave it at that. And so it, it does work sometimes. It doesn't work other times in the sense that sometimes, you know, you think you might be able to hone in on that, that value and it doesn't. So one of the cool things that has happened in the recent update is that if you close that um, putting camera and we go and open it again in the ball tracking, as I mentioned before in the configuration file, you'll see that this information has been saved. So if you wanted to, you can actually save this particular value. And if you're inside with a yellow ball, you might use that. And if you're outside with a white ball, you might use um, delete it and just use one of the stock colors. So let's pull up ball tracking again. Um, and let's see it's pulled in this uh, value from there and it's found that um, straight away. So as you could see, I got a lot better values with the white one. So for the next part of this video, I'll probably just use the white ball um, with GS Pro. So let's do that now and uh, get into it. So in order to reset that, it's quite straightforward. I'm just going to go into the config file and I'm gonna delete this value here. Done, save that and we're good to go. So now it should, um, all of the information, you know, the modification to the um, to the putting um, camera colors, like saturation stuff's been done. That means that we can um, push on and just use GS Pro now. So one of the things with the new tracker that's worth uh, pointing out when you go to use it is you want to run it as administrator. And one of the reasons you want to do that is you want to let it um, potentially bring up a a box about uh, sharing uh, network information. So I just tick those two and allow the access so I can give um, this particular connector access to connecting um, to the APIs. Now, I'm just going to jump uh, straight into GS Pro now. 
and I'm going to fire it up. So please bear with me as this starts. Um, so super exciting, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to try out the new um, SGT um, auto, auto putt tour as well as the web tour now that you can sort of get putting working. Okay, so recall, let's just go back to the, the settings um, while that loads. We'll go back to the settings in the JSON file. And just a quick reminder. Okay, so you've got the green light, so it's now, I think it's connected and it's communicating. Now you don't actually have to, you don't have to connect your R10 for this little exercise here. And I'll just uh, quickly show show you what I mean. So we're in this demo file here. Um, if we open this with Notepad, remember we've, so we've enabled putting. Um, we've got, uh, we want to Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. All right, welcome back everyone. So this is my second run through of recording the putting app uh, with GS Pro. I went through uh, the footage and realized that I didn't quite like uh, what I did. Um, so what I'm going to do is just a bit more of a refined demonstration of, of what's going on. So once we've uh, launched our API uh, connector as well as GS Pro, what we can do is we can jump into a uh, game. And so I think to demonstrate the putting, probably what's best is if I do a local match with a couple of um, longer putts, shorter putts, and we go from there. So we'll play um, the, the practice zone um, we've got here an auto putt or a gimme of two. When you play the online tour events, you get a, often a gimme of five, so you don't have to do those really refined putts. But in this case here, we're gonna try and hold out as much as we can. Um, the stimp or the speed of the greens 10, which is reasonably fast. Um, it's not what the professionals play on, but it's you know a little bit better than your average um, local course. Um, we actually wanna play only a few holes today. And what I'm gonna do is select some pretty straight um, putts. So we'll go a two, two meter putt, three meter putt, five meter putt, um, a six meter putt, eight meter cut, and we'll finish one with a nine meter putt. These are all straight, just to sort of give you a feel for that. It's quite possible uh, to do the whole range of putts that you might be expected to do. Um, I use meters, so if you wanna work out what these are in feet, so we've got a, a, almost a 27 footer right at the end. Um, versus a six foot type putt here for the two meter one. So uh, let's go and play and um, I'll watch, you can watch me go through it. So as I mentioned, I use, um, when I'm outside playing, I use an Xbox controller to control GS Pro. Uh, once you get it hooked up with your PC, you know, you can move around the green using the uh, joy joystick there. And if you need to, you can move the curse as well. So let's just uh, bring this one straight on. And as you can see here, the, the, there's no putting screen. It's, it's not there, what's going on? And that's because if we uh, jumped into the left corner, you will see that we're not actually in a uh, putting club. We've got the lob wedge selected. So what we can do is I've mapped an Xbox button. Um, I will just fire off that and that will um, enable putting and that will bring up my putting screen. And hopefully you can see it in OBS. It'll be right next to my cam. But this is how I've got it set up. So for when I do recording of my videos um, in the future, that this is what it looked like. Okay, so we're gonna bring in the ball. Uh, in this case here, I've got it configured for the white one. So we'll bring the white ball into the detection zone and we've got it here. And so what we've got is a very straightforward uh, two meter putt. Uh, let's just hit this one straight, about two meters. Okay, line her up. And we can just knock that one, bit off line there, but she goes in, no dramas. All right, so we're off to the next hole, which will be a bit longer. Again, I've selected all the straight ones just because hitting in a straight line is uh, easy, but uh, let's see how we go. Okay, so again, we need to enable um, putt. This is um, often done for you um, on the course, but this is just uh, the practice facility which allows you to do it um, as you go. All right, three meter straight putt. That was pretty straight. At it, okay, good. So the purpose of doing these straight putts is to sort of show you that you can actually putt reasonably well up the range of, of putts. So that was a uh, 
three meter putt. Now we're going to a five meter putt. This one is five meters for about 15 foot, uh, dead straight. A little bit of break towards the end there, but we should be able to uh, get there with a nice solid stroke. Um, so we enable the putting mode again. Put our ball into the detector. Hasn't quite got it yet. All right, that's got the big one. All right, we're gonna knock it five meters. So a bit more of a, a bigger stroke here, but let's go. That fun felt pretty good. Straight at it, good. So that you can see, that was five meters. You know, we're getting there. The distances are, are starting to increase um, a bit better. Again, a nice uh, dead straight six meter putt. Let's enable that putting as we do it. Don't need to do any aiming or anything. Pop it in the zone. Got it registered, six meters straight, let's go. Might be a bit short. No, oh, just off the lip there. So one of the things is you do, you do begin to notice if you're not hitting straight on those longer ones, if you're slightly offline, you know, towards the end there, it, it starts to dip out. So this one here, we've got eight meters. So I found that getting closer to that, you know, 30 foot mark uh, in this particular light, for example, the putting uh, doesn't work great, but you know, you're working with whatever conditions you've got. Um, you know, this is better than nothing. <clears throat> as you all know, the R10 struggles with chips less than 10 meters. So as long as you can putt something in that 10 meter range, you know, you're, you're, you, you've got a couple of options up your sleeve. <coughs> all right, so we've got eight meters dead straight, really starting to knock it. Uh, quite heavy these now with these last few holes, but let's get this one in. Ooh, I think that one was offline, and as you can see, that just motored past the hole, so it's entirely possible to do big putts there. So that went almost 12 meters. Obviously, a bit too hard. Uh, let's just try and sink this one in, still pretty straight. Should be pretty good. And we got there, good. All right, so the last one here is a big nine meter one. Um, so as you can see, you can hit the ball 10 meters um, on these, these ones really well. But anyway, it's the last one to finish the demonstration. Let's enable that putting mode. All right, it's fired up. Uh, let's go, nine meters. Oh, I think that's good. It's going to be a bit short. We're going at it. Yeah, on the line. There you go. Anyway, very close. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's great. It's a lot of fun. Um, I like to muck around. Practicing inside, my setup allows me to do it. I predominantly play outside. Um, and I take the putting green out with me when I want to play um, outside. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and, and learned something and maybe even solve one of your woes. Uh, I really do encourage you to keep um, persevering, trying to get it working. Uh, once you get it set up, you know, it, it is almost hands off. It's just getting that initial uh, color selected and reading really well. Um, but once you've done it, you know, it's, it is a game changer. It just makes the device, the R10 and GS Pro in particular, just an amazing experience. But anyway, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll, I'll see you next time.